Hey there everyone, my name is Rabbit, I shot the sheriff, and welcome to episode 26 of our Legend of Lagai walkthrough. In our previous episode, we made our way back to the ancient wind cave for what I believe is the third time so far in the series. However, this time was different from the other two because with the purification of Drake Kingdom, we now were granted access to new sections of the cave. So one section that we went into, we met an old man who had both an inn as well as an equipment store. So we upgraded some stuff for Noah, which took me way too long, but you know, it was very important and <laughs> poor Noah really needed some better stuff. So we went ahead and hooked our girl up. And then the other section of the cave contained a, I guess you call it an orphanage, kind of. Basically there's a lady known as the Old Water Witch and she runs an accessory shop as well as an inn and pseudo adopted a bunch of orphans. I don't know what she's got going on, but she hadn't had people in 10 years. So she was super enthusiastic about seeing us. She let us stay in a couple of her beds for free. And while we were sleeping, Vaughn, Noah, and Gala all had some sort of group dream slash vision from an unknown entity named Hari who essentially beckoned us to come to an area called Octum. So with all that being said and done, we are ready to advance northward to a totally new area and our first stop is a town called Jeremy as was explained to us from a young boy who said something that suggested there might be Genesis tree there. But anyway, before we leave, the old witch stops us by saying, customers, wait, don't go yet. You're my first customers in a long time. I can't let you go away empty-handed. And Vaughn now has two doors of wind and this is the first time we have seen these yet in the game. She'll give us a bit of a description and then I'll let you guys see what the actual item menu's description for it is. Old witch, what is this? What? You don't know about the doors of wind? Let's see, where do I start? It's an item that lets you fly anytime to a town you visited at least once. You can't use it in caves or inside a town, but many islands make up the Sebekus Islands. Use the wind door to get around there. Thank you for your kindness. Always so formal, Gala, geez. Oh, don't mention it. Well, good luck to you. I wish all shopkeepers were like this. I mean, we showed up, <laughs> she let us stay for free, and then gave us some new shit. Oh, let me not run out of here before I show you. So the summary of everything that she said to describe the doors of wind is that they teleport you to another city and these will be very useful when we need to do some backtracking to previous towns that we visited just for like little side questy things. So just keep them in the back of your head. We won't need to use them right now, although we could, I guess, if we wanted to, but there's no reason for us to go anywhere. So let's head west and we will come straight to Jeremy. I think we'll probably get into at least two fights before we get there, so let's see. But we've got some new monsters. I've got an ogre and what was that called, a deathwing? Oh! Look at Noah's new kicks. She is rocking that camo wear, you guys. I think she looks fabulous. It's not my favorite outfit of hers, but she looks good. All right, so let's do our round of spiriting. And these monsters aren't too tough. However, we are going to be taking a bit of damage. I'm going to try to ration out my mana. So I'm going to wait until we get inside Jeremy itself before I worry too much about, you know what, let me actually kill the death wings first. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do, because the ogre will take more hits. All right, perfect. So that's one less douchebag to mess with us. I see you bringing the blocks, ogre, okay. But he's almost dead. Really, Gala? Good job. I guess that's the risk you take when you are lazy and just auto your way through fights. All right, let's do it. All right, but Noah was able to clean up Gala's leftovers. <laughs> and she's so excited about it. 
I think she looks so adorable. I always thought the little camo outfit, like instead of them just calling it green, I think they should have described it as camouflage because that's what it kind of reminds me of. Anyway, we gotta cross this bridge before we get to our destination. And there's Hell's Trigger, which yes, is just a recolor of the ostrich, which is kind of lame and probably my only major complaint for this game. I've always been one of those people who hasn't been too fond of palette swapped monsters or opponents. I don't know, it just seems very lazy to me. But you know, I do understand that the developers put so much effort and energy into other aspects of this game that you know, that's fine. It's only a mild annoyance, I would say, that they did this. Oh, get wrecked, ostrich. All right, ogre's left. All right, Gala, don't fail me. It's up to you. All right, perfect. I've always just enjoyed and appreciated when I've played games that put forth that extra effort to design different types of monsters. I get that it's like easier just to recolor something and just put it in a different part of the world. Like we kind of associate it with the progression of the game, right? And that, okay, this is a stronger version of an enemy we've encountered before. But I just, I don't know. I would have liked to see them go a little bit farther, you know, take that extra step and give us new monsters in the new areas. But anyway, Noah says, Vaughn, it's mist. Everyone's turned into monsters in the mist. Noah, it's a Genesis tree. I sense a Genesis tree. That means we can save this town if we revive that Genesis tree. No shit, Gala. I sense that the Genesis tree is somewhere in town, someplace high up. How exciting! I want to go! I want to go to the high place! Oh, brother. <laughs> Basically, Noah's telling us she wants to get high, you guys! Noah, wait until after we fix Jeremy. Anyway, if we read this sign, it says, Welcome to Jeremy, land of the amazing sky gardens, by the Jeremy Tourism Board. <laughs> they should have taken the signs down, because this place is trash now. But if we talk to this guy, he growls, and all we get is a description saying it's a human possessed by Iseru. It looks like it's in pain. We talk to her, she says, Grrr. She is a human possessed by Seru, but she looks afraid. We can read this other side. Side. <laughs> this other sign. North will take us to the Sky Gardens, east to the General Store, and northwest to Jeremy Tourist Hotel. First, we're going to actually head eastward. We want to go inside this store here. Growl. He looks like he's in pain as well. I can only imagine, honestly. I'm sure everyone feels rather uncomfortable. All right, we've got some level two Nidos. You guys know the drill. We're gonna spirit to get ourselves ready for their bullshit. Bring it on, Nidos. And I'll probably heal, not after this fight, but after one more. I think we can make it that long, at least. I'm going to do my best to ration out our mana, so don't expect me to be spamming heals. All right, we'll just get rid of A. I think we should be able to kill these. They're not too tough. Oh, come on, Nido. Seriously? Real talk, when they block my shit, it drives me insane. I'm gonna have to ask you to not do that ultrasound bullshit. Basically, the ultrasound applies, I believe the status ailment is curse. And when you're cursed, you can't cast magic. Which blows a little bit. I mean, not that we would cast magic in this fight anyway, but... Alright. Get wrecked. But it's still very annoying when that happens. I think in addition to curse halting your use of magic, I think it also slows you down, if I remember correctly. Don't hold me to that last statement. <laughs> but anyway, let's run in here and access this chest, which contains a phoenix. Woohoo! 
then we're gonna run down here. And if you come over to the right hand side and examine these bookcases, I think is what they are. Maybe they're just dressers or shelves. Anyway, we get a target chain. I pointed this out when we were at the, I believe it was the Old Water Witches store. She had these for sale and I was saying, I really like the target chains. It applies bullseye, which increases the rate of successful hits, which is really nice. I'm probably going to put it on, I don't really need a lot of these guards that I've got going on to tell you the truth. So maybe I'll actually give this to Vaughn. Yeah, let me go ahead and give this to our boy Vaughn. I'll mess around with their accessories a little bit more later on anyway. We don't need to spend too much time on camera with me fucking around with it. Okay, so let's head back this way. And we can go northward and hook a left. We'll go inside that tall tower later. Oh my goodness, it's an adorable kabuki rat. So let's spirit, spirit, and spirit again. Come on guys, get your spirits up. One other thing, now that I'm thinking about it, and this isn't a complaint like the whole palette swapping, but something that I would have liked to see Maybe, you know, if we ever got a Legend of Legaia 3, is since the animations technically already exist for Seru to, you know, attack as well as cast magic, I think it would have been a nice touch for them to make it to where... Basically, you don't just use Seru as magic. You could summon them. Almost to, like, just fight alongside you. Maybe they'd have a time limit. <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to think about it more, but I think it would be pretty nice if you could summon them and they could stay maybe for one turn or two. And you can either make them cast their magic ability or just have them auto attack or whatever. I just think that would have been a cool touch because like I noted, the animation already exists because we encounter them as foes in the battlefield, right? So they already have it programmed to where they can attack and run and block and do all that bullshit. So it would have been nice if they took it a step further with that and allowed those animations to apply when you summon them. All right, it's over for you, Ogre. Fabulous. Anyway, I'm just thinking out loud. If we did get a Legend of Lagaya 3, I think that would be a nice, nice way of switching up the battle system just a little bit. Okay, so we want to run down here, and if we come this way, we get a power water, woohoo, from this chest, and this goes to our beautiful girl, Noah. Yay, Noah, you've gotten two in a row. Enjoy your power water, girl. All right, so let's head back. Okay, let's go around, I guess, since the chairs were not feeling me. And we will head outside, and I think we can go up this way. Yes, we can. Let's head inside this bar here. And oh, look at the pianist over here. Gow, ow, ow, gow, ow, ow. <laughs> Barunga, baringa, bruhu, bruhi. <laughs> I always just thought this was kind of funny to <laughs> see this, this stupid guy just over here. A piano player possessed by Seru and playing a strange song. Indeed. Okay, get out of my way. I want to come... Can I go around this way instead? Aha, I can't. So if we come and inspect this other shelf, I can't decide if it's a shelf or a bookcase. I don't know, I'll figure out what I wanna call these later. But we can get the guardian ring. So let's take a quick minute to look at the description for this. So it gives upper defense and lower defensive boost, which is fabulous. And it does it by 20%. I think Noah has two items that accomplish that same thing, yeah. I mean, Scarlet Jewel and the Azure Jewel. Azure. <laughs> Azure. <laughs> That's a hard word to say. But anyway, basically, the Guardian Ring is these combined. So it's a pretty nice upgrade. <sighs> How frustrating. I don't know who I want to give it to. Um, I guess what I could do... I can go ahead and just give it to Gala. I think that'll be okay. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's fine. Anyway... 
like I mentioned, can I, oh God, I don't know why I keep thinking that lower right hand corner has the exit to that. But anyway, we are done here at the tavern. Oh, okay, an adorable spike fish. And oh my God, you guys, I really need to heal my team. We'll do it after this fight. I promise. You can only put it off for so long, am I right? And so many new enemies. And I'm sure you guys are thinking, huh, are we only going to see Nidos here? Well, stay tuned. We may have a new Seru awaiting us before we're done here with saving Jeremy. But I, I will neither confirm nor deny it. You'll have to wait and see. Rest in peace, Spike Fish. <laughs> I always thought they make the cutest noises. All right, you two should be able to finish this stupid thing. Oh, nice. Perfect. And Noah got a level. Holler. This is a nice way to wrap up an episode, I would say. We explored a new area. And we haven't even touched the Sky Gardens yet, so that is nice. Okay. Let's go ahead and heal up our team. We'll use Gala's Vera. Um... Well, let me definitely heal Gala, and yay, Vera's magic level increased to level 5. I'll take it. Let's go ahead and heal Vaughn, or well, whatever. Let's just heal our whole team, because why not? Okay, when we come back together in our next episode, my friends, we will continue exploring Jeremy. We'll be able to wrap up all of the, like, treasure hunting in the town itself, and then we will immediately go into the Sky Gardens and take our exploration and looting there. So thank you so, so, so much for watching. As always, I'm your host, Rabbit. This is my 100% item guide for Legend of Lagaya, and I'll see you very soon in our next episode. So...